That's right, video players are out, and there's a lot to go over. There's so much to go over, I actually won't even be getting into programming for them today, uh, just because there's so many ways that you can set them up initially just to play videos, and VRChat's actually given us two separate systems to be able to use for these. One is the Unity video players, and the other is the AV Pro video players, which is a very expensive asset that you can get on the asset store that I will not be purchasing because VRChat made proxies for them using settings so we don't actually have to spend $500 or whatever it is just to play videos. Uh, we can just use their systems for free and it's great. I'll be going over how to set up both of those systems in this video and I will go into controlling them more in the future. But first, why don't you check out our sponsor, Universe? That's right, I don't have enough subscribers to get monetized yet, and I already have a sponsor. Universe produces free workshops on VR development using Unity that you can attend. They offer a pipeline of courses that you can take from a complete beginner to developing your own VR worlds and apps in the Unity game engine. They teach all their courses in VR and have a four times higher graduation rate than traditional online courses. Over 7,000 students have already taken their courses, and I'll actually be teaching VRChat specific courses this fall. You can use the code VALGAN to get $25 off any course when you enroll and check them out at tryuniverse.com or at the link in the description. Again, that's try, T -R -Y, universe .com. So with that out of the way, let's get started. I have a base model here that I made in Blender a couple days back that I've been using to test different things and make sure everything works. But largely, all we really need to worry about is this section here, which I have at a 16 by 9 ratio. And that is all we have to worry about. If you're not using a model like this, you can obviously just throw down a quad and have it be 1.92 by 1.08. And that gives you the exact same resolution. But I'm not gonna use this, so I'm gonna use my own setup here. First, what you wanna do is make sure that the material that you're using for your screen is using the video real-time emissive gamma. That can be found under video and real-time emissive gamma. That way you can have the correct lighting and brightness effects and it can be able to apply gamma settings if you're using a gamma-based video streamer like AV Pro. This actually gets automatically applied if you're using that, so you actually don't have to click this button at all and can just leave it blank. To start out, we're gonna use the Unity one. So I'm gonna do add component and search video and you see we have a lot of options, but the last one is Unity Video Player. This is going to be as similar to the SDK2 version as you can possibly get. So I'm gonna grab a video URL and I'm just gonna use this 8K footage I have right here, which actually I haven't been able to bump the resolution up far enough. I don't know if it's just my bandwidth or what, but I haven't gotten it to show 8K in game. So I'm just gonna paste that here, leave autoplay and loop on just for testing. And I'll bump maximum resolution up to 2160, which I believe is 4K. So there's two ways to render videos out of a Unity video player, and that's with a render texture or a material override. We'll start with the render texture. So I'll go into my folder here, right click, create render texture, and I'll just call this video texture. You can name it whatever you want. All you really have to worry about is making sure you have it at a scale that you want. So I'm just gonna do 1920 by 1080 uh, just for this test here. And if we go to my TV monitor here, we'll just put the video texture into this slot right here. So this will render now in this material here, but we need to be able to write to this material as well. So we'll put this in render texture right here, and that should be writing directly into this. Now, we wanna get some sound out of this as well. So I'm gonna change the target audio sources size from zero to be one, and we'll just have a new audio source right here. As I understand it, this array of audio sources only will ever work with the first one. You actually can't select multiple audio sources out of this. It seems that they might be working on different channels of audio, and I've only ever seen uses for the first channel, which is element zero. So you really only get one audio out from here. I'll just drag our audio source into here and let's change some settings over here. So Doppler level off 2D, we'll set it to be 3D so the audio is coming from the TV. If you want this to be a global sound, then that's fine, you can do that. I'll set max distance to be 20, does that look right? Yeah, that looks good. Min distance, I'll put it to be three so you don't have to be super close to it. And let's just change this. So 
this is the minimum distance for the volume and right now by default it goes to this volume which means it never actually gets down to zero and you can't walk away far enough from the TV in order to stop hearing it. I'm just going to make sure it's down in this bottom right corner and I'm actually going to delete the other two just so I can have a nice smooth curve along this axis here. We don't need play on awake and now we'll add the spatial audio source which is something VRChat wants you to use on all their stuff. So max distance 20 we'll put that as far here as well and in advanced options we'll just tick use audio source volume curve so that it uses this curve we set up here come back to our monitor we see every, we have everything set up here we have the audio source in the right place so i'll boot up vr chat and make sure that everything works all right here we are in game and we have a nice little view of this here this is actually a bit loud so i'm gonna turn my world volume down and we see that's rendering through here nicely and we have audio from it so that's playing automatically and that's really all you need to get the video player set up through the unity one i'm also going to show how to do the material override because it's pretty straightforward but it's just another option of doing the unity one after that we'll do the av pro version as well which is the one that i personally prefer all right back here in unity we can go to our monitor here and we'll change this from render mode render texture to material override now we don't need target texture here. It's fine to leave it, but I'm just gonna remove it. We also don't need it in this material here, so I'm gonna get rid of it. But if you want, you can leave it and it's perfectly fine. So for target material renderer, I'm gonna grab TV monitor and put it into this part here because this object has a mesh renderer on it right here. So from this mesh renderer, we're going to apply a material property to it and basically override that. So in here is where you put that material property, but you probably don't know which one to use right away. And it's all dependent on what shader you're using. We're using the one from the video real-time emissive gamma one. So I'm gonna right click on it here and do select shader so that we can see the different properties that we're allowed to modify. So here in the inspector, we have properties, main text, emission, and apply gamma. We don't need to care about either of these. What we care about is main text or main texture. So we're going to go to our monitor and put in underscore main text. And that will apply it into this material's main texture. And that will allow it to play the same way the last one did. I'll actually boot this one up as well just to prove that works. And there we go. Proof that it's working exactly the same as the other one. Now let's go set up the AV Pro one as well. So back in Unity, I'll select my monitor and we'll just remove the Unity video player script from this. But we'll leave the screen and all that. And I'll actually keep this audio source as well that we'll be using. The way that the AV Pro one works is it has three different things that you can do. So if I search video, you'll see we have AV Pro video player, video screen, and video speaker. These act very similarly to if you were to have the components in real life, say a DVD player, a TV, and a speaker. So I have my little CD player here selected right now. Uh, we'll just pretend that this is a DVD player and I didn't name it CD player, but you can have this on an empty object or whatever you like. You can have it all on the same object, even if you want. But for now, I'll put the actual player itself on the CD player. So we'll go video player and we'll put it here. And you'll see it's nice and short, not too many options. For the video URL, I'll just put in the same video I had before. Maximum resolution, we'll do 2160. And we'll leave on autoplay and loop. But this doesn't natively have any options for audio or video. So we'll go set those up on the different objects. So we'll go to our TV monitor and we will add a video screen. And this automatically uses the material override and applies it to main text. The difference being this one allows you to select a material index. And this is important because on my mesh render, I have two materials on this object. Zero is plastic black and one is screen. And screen is the one that I'm using for the actual video. So since this one is in the one slot, we want to be overriding material index one. And that will just allow us to write into the screen material. As well, you can do use shared material and any instance of this material in your scene will render the same video. 
So if I just control D on my screen and drag it over here, this will also grab the same video even if we remove the component for the video player, since we have used shared materials checked on the original one. Now it is important though that video player, the first slot here, is using whatever the object is that has your video player on it. And if you lost that, you can just hit the dot, use the drop down from the scene, and we only have one, so it's CD player. Now, since AV Pro allows you to use multiple audio sources, I'll actually be using two, one for left and one for right. So this audio source, I'm gonna put it as a child of speaker R, and we'll just get it zeroed out here in the center. And this will be the right speaker, control D to duplicate, and I'll put this one in the left speaker and center that out as well. Now I'll select both of them, do add component, video speaker. Now we can drag our CD player into here as well. And we have another option here that's stereo mix. What we wanna do is set the left one to be mono left and the right one to be mono right. If you're using stereo mix, you can also just use the stereo pan in here so that you can get whatever kind of pan that you want specific for your environment. One thing I'll probably do in the future is have a smaller separate speaker here as well that is just a center pan. So with everything set up, that should be it for the AV Pro player and we can just go into VRChat to double check that everything's working. All right, we're back in VRChat and both monitors are rendering the same thing. This is all with AV Pro as well. And I'll bump up the audio just a bit so we can hear. It's a little hard to tell, but the audio from this speaker is coming from the right pan of the audio. And the audio in this one is coming from the left pan. It's a little bit weird. You kind of have to move around a bit in order to actually tell, but it does give it a nice surround sound effect. Now I'm going to drop the audio so I'm not going to get copyright strike and I'll close out. And there we go. That is the basics of setting up the video players in VR chat. Of course, you don't even have to have a video screen or anything rendering the videos for these objects if you just want it for playing music. And that's fine. In the future, I'll put up more videos for how to control it, well, how to play, pause, and skip, how to have a playlist of videos, and how to put in your own URL for them. And I'll make those videos as I figure out how to do that. So thanks for watching. Special thanks to everyone on my Patreon. You've been wonderfully supportive, and I'll have all of these assets available to you after this video is posted. And a huge thanks to Universe for sponsoring this video. I really look forward to teaching the courses this fall, and it's going to be great. Until next time, I'll see ya.